I'd love to share a breakthrough from one year ago. For example, people in the crypto community, they think the dollar is going to collapse next month and it's been 10 or 15 years. Now, I got humbled on my projections and also the timelines how long it takes. We are all unique and that's why we're here, a unique expression of the divine. And so we have our own piece of the puzzle. And sometimes as humans, we forget that. I also remember I came for the mission of bringing the new earth into manifestation. What do you see as the predictions or bold predictions for the future with AI? Are you optimistic? Are you pessimistic? Welcome back, everybody, to the Breakthrough Moment podcast. Today's special guest is a good friend of mine, Alex Lamber. So we've actually known each other for over five years. Uh, we used to do collaborations, business, conscious business masterminds in Sydney. Uh, and I was super inspired by a lot of the work that you did in Sydney. I was like, I want to connect with this guy. This guy's awesome. But to give you guys a bit of a background on who Alex is, Alex's mission is actually supporting the rising consciousness of the planet. And he does this through his podcast which is the light leaders. Now get this, he's had over 200,000 views on YouTube alone. And for the last five years, he's actually created over 200 different episodes. So I'll link you his podcast around here to go check it out. And now because of all this experience and you know been doing it for so long, he's now coaching other conscious leaders to create their own podcast. So if you guys are looking to create your own podcast, get in touch with Alex. But um, yeah, look, I'm super excited to, to, to dive into this with you, bro. Um, and by the way, for those of you who are joining us for the very first time, the Breakthrough Moment podcast is around sharing successful entrepreneurs' breakthrough moment or moments throughout their career that, that they've had a massive breakthrough. And as we listen to their breakthroughs, it allows us to have a breakthrough at home as well within our own business. So without further ado, let's, let's jump into it. Super curious to hear uh, some of your biggest breakthroughs throughout your career, man. Mm. So... If I were to pick one, uh, a recent one, actually, I'd love to share a breakthrough from one year ago. So I usually live in Bali, but right now I'm in Germany. I'm flying back on Monday. My partner is from Germany. We're visiting the, the families. And I was there last year also after an event in Ibiza in October. I was invited to that amazing New Earth community event flying business class to support that project and with really beautiful people. But in the end, just after that event, I actually stopped working with them because they didn't have the funds. And this was kind of the end of two or three years when I was working on creating the New Earth, New Earth community with different types of currencies, different types of relating to each other, different approach to money. And we had that kind of utopian vision, but it was a little bit disconnected from reality, I believe. Or at least it was very optimistic. And so my breakthrough moment is me a year ago in Germany, realizing what I've been working on the past two or three years are beautiful projects but aren't synchronized with the reality of our world now. It's like we, we were a little bit too early for our times. And that translated into things like not being attracted to working with the fiat money system when it still had a world operance today. And that led to us wanting to use alternative social media platform where actually they're not ready. And so at that moment, I thought, okay, I'm just going to simplify things. And instead of creating now a society with different money, different governance organization, different social media platforms, I'm going to simplify things and look at the world, how it is right now, and see how I can contribute best with that reality. And so I'm still in touch with people building those new paradigm society. I think it's needed, but I just felt that my role in it was, um, yeah, it wasn't aligned anymore. It was a little bit frustrating because it was a lot of things outside my control 
And then I felt I couldn't really be my genius and doing the things I wanted to do, always waiting for the funding to come that was delayed for the decentralized organization platform that say was going to be ready next week or year. And, and going back into coaching feeling, I'm just going to learn, putting the work, help a few people, get them results, get income from that. And, um, and really go back to that entrepreneurial journey, journey that I really like where you lower the variables, you put in the work, you get the results and you grow from that. So if I were to recap, it would really be looking at where the world is at and not where I want it to be and play with that versus a lot of people, especially in our conscious communities, they can be into truth seeking and conspiracy theories. And that's really good because we want to have our own view of the world, but sometimes they go a little bit too far in making projections. For example, people in the crypto community, they think the dollar is going to collapse next month and it's been 10 or 15 years. Now, I think they're right. It's going to collapse some point because it is a bit of a house of cards, but it's been very resilient. Same with people making predictions. I had someone on my podcast who was like, Facebook won't exist in six months. That was during the pandemic time. And it's still around. So I think it's good to understand where the world is going and do some truth seeking, but also get, um, I got humbled on my predictions and also the timelines, how long it takes. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I've seen you transform in many different ways over the last five years. In Sydney, man, you you were creating so much magic, connecting with so many amazing entrepreneurs. I forgot to mention you you created a book that had co-authors, right? The new the new earth, the the wave of getting out of the nine to five and things like that. And then you kind of went to Bali and had this spiritual awakening and and you know, kind of doing all this stuff with crypto. I was like, wow, this is next level. And now we've kind of circled back together and it's cool to see you've dived into a really cool niche that you're helping, I guess, yeah, leaders get their message out there more and make more impact. Um, I'm super curious to know, like, for other entrepreneurs that might be going through their own breakthrough or their own realization of maybe their old self and transitioning into a new new paradigm, which is kind of what you've done. Do you have any advice for other entrepreneurs who are looking to have a breakthrough in a, in a similar way? When I started in entrepreneurship, I had a lot of different interests and that kept going. And so I've actually evolved a lot from doing things like personal development coaching to MLMs, to crypto, to building communities, to now coaching people on podcasting. And I think it's amazing to have a lot of interests. A lot of the light workers, conscious entrepreneurs style, they usually have a lot of interest and there's a process of discovery. And I think it's good to find a good balance between doing something we love and being consistent. There's a framework that I guess a lot of your viewers would know, which is the Ikigai framework, finding the meeting point between what you love doing, what you're good at, what the world needs, and what you get paid for. So that's a framework I've been playing a lot with in my discovery of what I want to do. And that's why I ended up on the podcast coaching for now. So it'd be to find that balance and I don't have the exact answer of how much to definitely follow your heart and follow your passions. And at the same time, when we're talking business to understand that it's good to be consistent. And that's something I've been lacking a little bit in the past five, six years, to be honest. And every time you pivot, there are things to redo and to rebuild, which is exciting. It's life, but it's also not necessarily the most efficient business-wise. So for example, in my coaching, a year ago, I made the decision to become a coach. And I had some experience with it, but that's when I made that decision. Okay. I'm going to post the community building work for now, and I'm going to be a coach. Of course, there's still some community building aspect, but that's how I label myself professionally. And I 
started to do health coaching and then coach people on purpose. And then I went into the, the podcast. And what I've tried to do during that discovery phase is to really find out what is it that I can do for the next five years. And when I was doing health coaching, I'm very passionate about people thriving on a raw vegan diet. And on my podcast, I've had most of the top leaders in that, and I'm pretty known in that community. So it felt like a low hanging fruit. But after doing about four or five months coaching people on health, I realized that I was quite passionate about it, but it wasn't quite the same. And so I could have kept going. And most likely today, six months from now, I would probably be doing better with my coaching business if I had stayed in the health niche. But I think three or four years from now, it wouldn't work that well because I would become a little disinterested in it. And what I noticed when I coached people on health is that I would get especially excited if I knew they had an ambitious project such as becoming a coach themselves and impacting many people or having a podcast. And so I'm very happy that I pivoted early enough thinking I want to do something for the next five years I'm passionate about and build on that rather than having kept going on the health coaching and probably then a few months from now, I would be like, well, that's not my highest passion. I need to pivot. But then I've spent a lot of time on something that was less aligned. So taking some time to really feel into what is it that you could do for the next five years is a really good piece of advice. And then, of course, to know that sometimes you need to try many different things. So there's also nothing wrong with trying these things, but to me, it's about finding that balance. For sure. Yeah, the Ikigai is a great structure. And I think, I think we evolve as we learn. And I think the world now more than ever is giving us information through social media and meeting more people and traveling that. We, we, we're evolving, you know, just as fast uh, or faster than ever. So it's, it's interesting to kind of, um, yeah, see each other's transformation, even just in the last 12 months, we were joking about that, you know, before the podcast and how things are changing so much, but it's, I think it's a, there's like a, a collective shift for many people or definitely amongst our community, people are really elevating and, and evolving in a, you yeah. know, quite a fast way I've seen. So I'm super curious, bro, um, if you could go back, go back in time and go back before you started your entrepreneurial journey and change just one thing, what would that one thing be? (laughs) That's a hard question because I believe that the journey is the destination. So I don't really believe in changing anything, but, um, knowing that it's perfectly imperfect, um, if I were to give advice to my uh, younger self, as people often talk about in the podcast, there would be definitely the thing that I mentioned before is taking even a bit more time sitting down and filling into what I could do for five years. But I honestly think that I needed to have the experience to figure that out um, myself and now at 34, having done all these experiences, I have a much clearer understanding of what I love how I can serve, what the world needs, what I can get paid for. So that's one thing. I also really liked what you shared about um, the both of us changing things and following each other. And actually, we live in that age of information where there's a lot of different ways to live that are available, different ways to make money and create a business. And I'm so grateful to live at such a time. I know for yourself, I, when I met you, you had that big YouTube channel and I admired you for that, that had 15,000 views on how to make smoothies. And then we've done some MLMs together and then like many things. And you've um, always also had these different interests. It's beautiful. And one other thing I think is important is avoiding op- shiny object syndrome. So I see a lot of people um, changing too fast. 
So again, here there's a balance because there is a time when you want to change what you're doing because what you're doing is not aligned. But it's also easy to get a lot of different advice from trading coaches telling you trading is going to be so easy and you'll make a lot of money. MLM people telling you their MLM is the best. Coaches of coaches that tell you you should be a coach and in six months you'll be super successful and same with dropshipping and this and that. And so to me, it's like balancing those interests with at some point sticking to something and really try and make it work even when it gets hard. That's another thing. And Yeah, that would, that would be the main thing I'd tell myself. So try and find out what you like, want to do for five years. And don't just give up when it's hard and change. And, and also give the thing really a chance because sometimes people quit just before it gets successful. There's Alex Ormosi. He has it, this kind of curves he shows where you get an ID and you get really excited. So then your your mood is like up. And then it gets hard and you're like, and you quit. But actually that's the moment when, when people keep going, it goes back up and then they go to something else and they do the same. Yeah. So there's nothing wrong with having a lot of interest, but also when we think business, we can think, um, we can cover also different aspects of ourselves in the long run. It doesn't have to be all in two years. So let's say someone like me, I'm passionate about helping leaders of the new earth, especially conscious leaders, have more impact in the world. And I believe podcasting is such a beautiful way to do it. So right now I'm focusing on this, but I'm also passionate about health. I'm also passionate about consciousness and people understanding who, who they are and mental health. So maybe 10 years from now, 15 years from now, I'll be more a thought leader in consciousness. But it can be 10 years from now. It doesn't have to be all at the same time. So I would also tell my younger self to be more patient and add all the beautiful things I want to create in the world. I can create them in blocks of five years rather than all of them in the next year. Yeah. Great advice. Great advice for sure. Be patient. Figure out what you want to do for five years. Hone in on that and understand there's going to be highs and lows, but if it's linked to an icky guy, then there's a, there's a higher probability of it being successful. Yeah. Cause it takes time to build the momentum, you know, and I think it, the first year of anything, any business is going to be the most challenging. So if you can get through that first year and, and keep moving forward. Um, then yeah, the five years is definitely possible as well. It's exciting. Uh, yeah, where will I be in five years? Where will you be in five years? Where, it's, it's such a great question, you know. Um, the world is changing so fast. It used to be 10-year visions, you know. It used to be, you know, now it's five. Soon it'll be like one-year vision. So the world's changing so quick. Look, you've interviewed 200 thought leaders and light workers and, you know, leaders of the world. What has been your number one lesson or breakthrough after interviewing so many amazing people like you must have you, you know i i know what it's like i learned so much from these podcasts but you've interviewed so many what, what's been the biggest aha or lesson or breakthrough from that experience mm. i will go for doing something you're passionate about i will go from knowing yourself because often we look at other people as potential role models which is fine as inspiration which is great but ultimately in the fabric of consciousness our own individual selves as are created because they're part of the perfection of the whole and those differences are needed so we are all unique and that's why we're here a unique expression of the divine and so we have our own piece of the puzzle and sometimes as humans we forget that we think all humans should be why you should be an entrepreneur why you should be a musician why you should have kids why you shouldn't have kids and if you 
One day I was meditating in front of nature in Bali, which is beautiful and lush there. And like, you know, the coconut tree doesn't tell the mango tree why it should be a coconut tree. And the mango tree doesn't tell the rose that it should be a tree because it's strong. It's all perfect. The, the rose is delicate and the mango tree gives beautiful fruits and juicy fruits. And the oak tree doesn't give any fruit that we can eat. But should all oak trees beco become mango trees because it's nice to have mangoes? I don't think so. And humans is the same. So... Sometimes when we think everyone should be like this or should do this way, um, it's not like that. It's the beauty of, of life is that we all have our own um, uniqueness. And when you apply this to entrepreneurship, some people are meant to be coaches. Some people are meant to do network marketing. Some people are meant to be um, part of bigger teams. And so, yeah, rather than looking at what's working, it's like everything's working. Oh, what's the best way to make money? Is it trading? Is it being a coach? Is it being part of a startup? Well, the best way is your way. is the one that resonates with it. There's a very famous video by Steve Jobs, definitely a su successful guy in many ways, who mm -hmm. says, well, you got to do something you love because things are going to get hard. And when it gets hard, you got to love it. Otherwise, you're going to quit because you're not insane, right? If it gets hard and you don't like it, you stop. Makes sense. And that goes back to that curve that I shared about Alex Omozi when it gets hard. So I do look at what the world needs. I do look at what's uh, an industry that's trending. All these are valid, but I think the for me, the key piece of the Ikigai is what I love. That's probably what I weigh the most in the equations. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, being around so many, I guess you would have met so many authors or, you know, trainers and educators throughout your experience. And I know that you love books and you love learning and personal development. What would be your top books or top resources that you'd recommend every entrepreneur to, to start reading and learning? Mm -hmm. My favorite book is A New Us by Eckhart Tolle. Also love The Power of Now. And I know this is not a business book, but to me, creating a business, again, back to the being passionate about, is going to work if it's you. I don't want you to create a business because you feel it's better to be an entrepreneur because people around you think it's the best if you are an amazing artist, be an amazing artist. And I think we live in a world now that has awakened and where people can make a good income, uh, being an authentic artist, uh, being a writer, being a dancer, whatever lights you up. And so if you want to be a successful entrepreneur and successful being not only making money, but also fulfilled while doing it, I think it's really important that you do it in a way that's um, authentic and that you know yourself. Going back to what I shared and what I learned a lot from the variety of people I've had on the podcast. So simply, this book, I feel, will just give you the perspective of who you are, how to create from joy and enthusiasm how to sometimes take time away to really figure out what really resonates. And then that will help you build a successful business. One, because you'll like it and you'll be more fulfilled because it's authentic. If it's not, you will stop and that's good and do what's authentic to you. And also because building a business is a marathon. It is a long-term project. And this will, and if you can maintain your awareness, your mental health as you do it, because entrepreneurship is 
potentially more challenging than other ways to make money. Well, if you can take care of your mind this way, you will be here in the long run. I believe more in self-care, taking some time to also prioritize the health, the relationships, the mental health, the things that bring you joy in life. So you keep doing it 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, rather than going um, too much into the hustle. But again, in the spirit of what I shared about the mango tree and the rose, some people are meant to be hustlers and they actually like it. So I'm also not saying that it's bad to be a hustler. Alex Olmozi seems to be very fulfilled talking about working a lot. If that works for him, it's amazing. But I would just make sure what I'm doing is relatively sustainable. And I think, um, yeah, reading Eckhart Tolle is amazing or this kind of uh, spiritual teachings. Now, I'd also want to share that recently for business itself, I've uh, looked at the training from Alex Omozi on $1 million offer and Liz. I think that's really good. Uh, I really enjoy Dan Coy, also YouTube channel. He talks a lot about building a one-person business and not necessarily having to niche. I think he has a really good understanding of how to create a business from a personal brand. And that's, it's something that I'm doing myself. It's something I've been learning from, so D-A-N space K-O-E, that's uh, his name. And I always have a, a lot of other inspirations, but I'll leave it there for now. How about you, bro? Pardon me? What's your top books? Oh, top books? Oh, okay. Um, good question. I love it when the questions come back. It's great. Um, of course, you're going to ask the questions, <laughs> fellow podcaster. So we, um, the books that have changed my life the most, um, I really liked Russell Brunson's Expert Secrets. Mm. Oh, I love this one too. Yeah. Yeah. On business. Like, it's like such a Bible. I love it. It's been a while business, ago, right? It was a return like maybe six years ago, five years ago. And I think at the time, it's, it's yeah. been um, really a foundation for a lot of the modern day marketing. Were you also following yeah. Sam Ovens? Because now I'm, uh, I'm using school and I really, I really like Sam Ovens. Nice. I haven't read his, Has he got books? He doesn't have a book, but he has a lot of videos. Yeah. Okay. Wow. What a great success story. He is far out. Super inspiring. And um, some of us, great example of someone that's so different. He's much more geeky. He doesn't take his health as seriously as I do. So it's someone I look at one like, he's totally different than me, but uh, I have a lot of appreciation for what he does. And I think for him, his lifetime, what he's doing is perfectly aligned for his unique self. Unique self. That's a good point. Yeah, I think the real key message, and I'd like to ask the next question, which is, you know, what's the key message or the one key call message you like people to go away with today but from me it sounds like yeah by getting into your zone of genius is the the most effective efficient fulfilling um you know thing we can do is getting into our zone of genius whatever that is and yeah. it's going to take time it can take time not everyone's going to nail it straight away some people get to the 40s or 50s and still don't even know it so it's it's part of that self-discovery. And I really like that you're talking about, um, you know, honing in and maintaining your health. That's definitely something that we, mm-hmm. we hold very, we have very view, different views on health, but we maintain our health at a high standard, regardless of the hustle, regardless of the, the busyness and, you know, doing the work. So I think that's an important reminder for entrepreneurs to make sure that, yes, we can hustle. Yes, you want to be, working and creating wealth and different things for a very long time it's so important to maintain our health so um yeah so yeah i'd love to know what would be the core message that you'd like people to to take away from this podcast Mm, thank you i mean we've talked a bit about finding what you're passionate about but i want to add that 
to find what you're passionate about. As we already discussed a bit, you need to start, you need to try a, a lot of different things. And I was listening recently to um, a podcast with Chris Williamson. And he's talking about how, to him, his perspective is in your 20s, you want to try a lot of things. And then in your 30s, you want to double down on what you found from your dis discovery in your 20s. And there's a lot of truth to that. So, of course, uh, we want to reflect on what we love. But to do that, we need to try different things. And it's such a cliche advice for entrepreneurs, but it's so true. It's just get started. You got to start, right? And there's so many things that hold us back. So, for example, when I coach people to start a podcast, things that people have usually is imposter syndrome, right? Who am I? And that can come from different limiting beliefs but ultimately a big win is just to start and to do it and yeah just just starting is very important taking those actions and not being paralyzed by perfectionism or just education so that's one and then the other one is for the maybe more spiritual people out there or people who identify more as build builders of the new earth, light bearers, light workers, light leaders, is that deep down when you remember where we came from, so we come from pure consciousness and now we're incarnated in, in a body in this current timeline and physical realm and we made a choice to be there. I believe that when we made that choice, we came here to experience, to enjoy, and we always need to keep that in mind. But for me, I also remember I came for the mission of bringing the new earth into manifestation. So when we look at our earth today, it's such a beautiful plane and we can really uh, enjoy, but there's also a lot of things that to me don't resonate. Of course, wars some kind of abuse, uh, the way we treat nature, animals, each other. And to these people who remember like me why we came here, let's just not be in the way of ourselves and be too shy about it. Let's just do what we came here to do, have fun with it. Part of it is speaking our truth in the world of today. Again, going back to my realization, in the world of today, social media is huge. It has huge influence on people, whether you like it or not. I used to not like it. That was part of it. And my breakthrough I was like, um, Instagram, Facebook, I'm done with it. They're censoring me, YouTube. Uh, they're part of, you know, about what you And... Uh, and uh, yeah, they're censoring, they're capturing people's attention, watch the social dilemma, all this stuff. It's what people use. And so let's just get on with it. So even if we don't like social media, um, for the people who resonate with it and are like, I want to share a message, let's have a podcast. Let's have deep conversations like this on YouTube and inspire people because that's what we came here to do. So just, just remembering from a higher perspective who we are, what we came here to do. And then all these little resistances of the ego, the imposter syndrome and all this, they're much easy. They're still there, it's fine, but they're much easier to overcome. Also regarding podcasting, one thing I'm very grateful for is AI. So right now using softwares like the one we're using now, Riverside, you can record in super high quality. You can have scenes that shift automatically. You can have clips created by AI with subtitles. And basically the piece of work we're creating right now would have taken many hours of editing, of creating clips, even two or three years ago. I used to pay a VA a thousand dollar a month to do these things. And people watching this episode might think, whoa, that must be so much work. But actually AI makes it so much easier to have amazing quality content and promote it. For sure. Yeah. The that's actually my next question is like, as the world is changing so much with AI literally disrupting every industry in so many parts of the world, and apparently Amazon laid off like hundreds of thousands of staff because of the new robotics and AI, you know, this is quite disruptive. 
what do you see as the predictions or bold predictions for the future with AI? Are you optimistic? Are you pessimistic? Mm, I'm pretty optimistic because I believe that we create a reality with our consciousness. So it can get a little bit metaphysical, but we don't live in one world. Every consciousness creates its own world. So some people will go on a timeline that's more dystopian because that's what they focus on their reality on. And Bashar, Dolores Cannon, they talk about this work really well. And some people, they will go into a version of us where uh, AI is supporting us and doing the things that we don't like to do. And evolution is part of life. It's not like you grow or you stop growing. It's like you grow and you evolve or you die. And so it's part of the game that we, we, when we came here, we wanted those change, those evolution. And so it's part of our power to choose what we focus on. Personally, I align with the timeline of AI supporting us and creating new possibilities that we're excited about. That's a good way to look at it. I like that. I like that for sure. Um, let's jump on that timeline. Yes, please. <laughs> um, so I want to ask one more powerful question and then I'd love you to introduce, you know, how people can get in touch and who you help with the podcast and things like that. So my last question is, if you could challenge the audience and really suggest or push them in a certain way or inspire them in a certain way, what's the one action or challenge you'd like to impart to all the listeners today? Okay, if you're up for the challenge, take 20 minutes and do nothing but meditate, close your eyes and feel into your purpose and feel into potentially something that you know would excite you that you've been wanting to do and that you've postponed. And you can write it down during your meditation. So it could be starting a podcast, in which case a step could be send me a DM. It could be to start um, your business, in which case it could be to send Zach a DM. It could be to take more care of your health. And the next step could be just subscribe to your gym. So basically feel into what's one thing that you really feel you want to do. And, and write down just the next step and do it. Like you can write down a few next steps, but just do the first one. And so if you need to get in shape, maybe it's just like getting a program. Maybe it's, uh, maybe you know it's just subscribing to the gym, you know. Do that one action. Um, yeah, that's my little challenge for the listeners. Take 20 minutes, sit down, fill into what's coming in that place of calmness to you that you feel is the next thing to do and um, take action on it. And um, sometimes, you know, the advice, usually the advice you give to others is good advice for yourself. So um, I, I sometimes forget to do as much of the meditation that I like to do. So I'll probably do that myself just after the call. That's the challenge to myself. Well said. <laughs> Um, that's funny. Yeah, I've started meditating more. Uh, here in Copenhagen, there's the gym that has a sauna, and I'm the only person that goes first thing in the morning. It's like opens at eight o'clock, but I'm still the first person there. This place, like everyone wakes up and does stuff later, so it's nice to do some breath work and some meditation in the sauna and things like that. It's been just a good reminder to sit in silence with how busy and noisy life can be for me. I'm like, it's just, just, it's been really powerful to keep my, my groundedness throughout the day even more. It's been awesome. It's a great one. Um, so yeah, look, there's going to be listeners out there, uh, who are looking to create a podcast. Um, how do you help them? How can they get in touch with you? What are the next steps for them? Yeah, a lot of people get paralyzed because they think it's um, they're overcomplicated. But again, also thanks to AI, it got even more simple to do the really 
high quality podcast with something like I usually ask five hours a week from people. And then from the moment we work together, I can guarantee you'll have your first episode out within 30 days and you can have your first 10 episodes out in the first 90 days. All high quality. If you wanted to have guests, how to link those, those great guests. And uh, a lot of people, you know, there's a statistic, which is 90% of podcasts, they don't reach episode 10. Because people get overwhelmed, they don't have the right tools, systems. But on top of that, there's even more podcasts that never got created. So many people think, I want to start a podcast. And two or three years later, they still haven't started. So I help people with that and make it step by step, super simple. And if you feel I can support you with that, just send me a DM on Instagram, on Telegram. I can, we can put the link in the description. And on both, it's at Alex E. Lember. And just DM me, just DM me podcast. And then I'll have a few questions to see if it's aligned. And then we can jump on a call and, and explore more. There you have it, guys. Seriously, I couldn't agree more. The technology and the ability to create a lot of output um, in a short period of time. If you know the right things to do, because podcasting can be super overwhelming and so many moving parts. And, you know, what if you don't click the record button? And, you know, like there's so many, there's a lot of tick boxes that need to happen. So, yeah, everyone at home, if you're wanting to start a podcast, reach out to Alex. I'll put his links around the video here. Any final comments, man, before we wrap this up? Yeah, I just want to send a, a lot of gratitude to you, Zach. We've been uh, on an entrepreneurial journey where we've crossed paths for a while. I'm very grateful that you invite me here. And I'm also really grateful for everyone who took some of their precious time. We usually say it's the most precious resource you have is your time and attention and put it into listening to this 40 minutes conversation. So I want to send a lot of gratitude to you to the people listening also to the technology that allows us to broadcast our voices to the other parts of the world it is true magic so so much gratitude for that and really sending a, a lot of love to you and everyone listening amazing thanks for joining us we'll have to do it again soon maybe i'll become i'll, I'll uh, join your podcast when i come to bali mm. we love that